Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com. Let's get into it. Ben from Birkenhead, England says, Howdy, partner. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. I didn't know you knew how to speak Texan. <laughs> uh, he said, How's my favorite paleontologist? I'm, <laughs> I'm fine, Ben. How are you? He says, I know that theropods probably didn't hunt with other species, but do you think that herbivores such as ceratopsians would have lived in herds with other ceratopsians? Take care, my friend. Well, first of all, thank you, Ben. I appreciate hearing from you. I always like, I always like hearing from you. Yeah, you know what? Now, when it comes to, to herbivores, I do believe that they were uh, in herds with interspecies, mixed with other species, and there's a reason why. When you look at the various different kinds of dinosaurs, they each have a sort of an advantage that another may not have. For instance, the Ceratopsians were sort of the brute force of the group. With those enormous horns and those powerful bodies, they were very, uh, very well defended. Well, duck-billed dinosaurs probably intermixed with these guys when they herded because of the protection that Ceratopsians would give them. Duckbills, on the other side, probably had better vision. They certainly had a higher vantage point to be able to look out for danger. So in my opinion, you'd look at ceratopsians and hadrosaurs and they would be the perfect match to travel together so that they could each sort of uh, help the other in looking for uh, danger and being able to defend against it. We see that today. It's very common to see herds of a variety of herbivores traveling together for that very reason. So yeah, I'll bet you if we could travel back uh, and see these herds of dinosaurs, I don't think they would just be a single species walking together. I think you'd get a variety of uh, a mix of different species, all because they had the ability to be more effective and more secure with the advantages each species gets. So yeah, I, I do believe that would be the case, Ben. Nice to hear from you. All right, Alan from Nexar Malta, he says, hi, DG. I have two questions. Uh, I made with the help of my brother. Well, Alan, first of all, make sure to thank your brother for helping you uh, come up with this. I think that's very cool of him. Uh, the questions are, is Cryolophosaurus a Dilophosaurid? Uh, that, you know something? I'll tell you something, buddy. I don't know. I do not know if Cryolophosaurus fits into the family of Dilophosaurids. I don't think he does, but you know what? I don't know. You, you, you stumped me, my friend. I just don't know. His other questions are, uh, were there any dinosaurs living on mountains? Have a nice day. Well, Alan, thank you very much. I hope you have a nice day and your brother and your family. Were there any dinosaurs living on mountains? My best guess is absolutely yes. The problem is, is that when you live in mountainous regions, it's very unlikely that your body becomes fossilized. To become fossilized, you have to be buried in some sort of sediment in most cases, in almost all cases. And when you live on a mountain, the sediment doesn't have a tendency to cover your body. Sediment just simply flows downhill. To be covered by sediment, you really need to live in the lowland areas, in the flood plains, where it's more likely that slowly rising water carrying a lot of mud and debris is going to ultimately bury you. Now, it's possible that there could be sandstorms, but mountains very seldom have sandstorms. Sandstorms are really attributed to the more lowland areas as well. So, even though I do strongly believe there were mountainous dinosaurs, we may never know of their existence because their bodies just didn't fossilize as well. All right, Mike from Naugatuck, Connecticut. Who would win in a fight between Arctotus and the Columbian Mammoth? Well, Mike, if you're talking about two adults, the Columbian Mammoth is just too big for an Arctotus. Um, I just can't imagine even a bear as gigantic as Arctotus would ever mess around with something as big as an adult mammoth. Now, the babies were a different question. I do think that it's possible that Arctotus certainly could have and was capable of killing a baby mammoth, but that's only if mom and all of uh, baby's aunts aren't around. Because if all of the aunts, and maybe even the dad or the uncle, whoever it turns out to be, even if he was around, I don't think a, a bear would even approach them. So uh, if you're talking about adults, unfortunately, a Colombian mammoth is just too big for an Arctotus. All right, Zachary from Georgia says, Dear DG, I heard that raptors lived in packs. Did they live in an average size pack or five or more or packs of possibly hundreds? Thanks. P.S. Allosaurus is not my favorite, but he's still awesome. Zachary, <laughs> well, listen, buddy, you don't have to like Allosaurus to be able to write to me, so that's perfectly fine, my friend. 
Uh, packs of raptors. Now, there is fossil evidence that shows us that raptors probably, at least sometimes, hunted in packs. Uh, they probably lived in them too. That would be my opinion. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, it, once your pack grows to be too large, then it actually becomes detrimental. In most cases, pack hunting animals always have an alpha, that is, someone that leads the group. And it's usually the case that um, when a kill is made, the alpha usually takes the food source first. But if you have hundreds of raptors in your pack, it would be very difficult to figure out who's the boss when there's that many of you. And then the problem becomes when you do make a kill, how do you get a hundred raptors to keep their place in line while the alphas eat? It's just too many. The other problem with having too big of a group is that it almost is impossible for you to be able to hide your presence. My best guess would be that they probably were in groups of maybe, I don't know, three to maybe upwards of 10 or 12 even, maybe that many. But once you get past that, you start to run into a lot of problems. And again, those problems are, how do you hide yourself when you have that many? And the more of you they are, the more likely somebody will spot one of you, the more likely someone will smell one of you. So I think they would be much more effective if they lived in a little bit smaller groups. All right, uh, Israel from Brockton, Massachusetts. Hey, DG, I have a question about dino, dinosaurs and predators. If a Laphrosaurus was still living today in Africa, how would it adapt with the other predators? P.S. I love the cartoon you made. It's awesome. Israel, I'm glad you like that cartoon. We're still trying to get somebody to buy that, to turn that into a, uh, into a television show. That If you haven't seen that cartoon, um, look on, the YouTube, on my YouTube page and you'll see it. It, it's, it was a lot of fun to make. Uh, how would a Laphrosaurus have adapted? Uh, that's a toughie. That's a tough one because... Living with mammals, a Laphrosaurus would have a disadvantage, and that is he just doesn't have the same level of intellect. He's not as intelligent. He wouldn't have the ability to do the things that his mammal competitors could do. So in my opinion, simply based on a guess, I believe a Laphrosaurus would have adapted by becoming simply a scavenger, showing up after a kill was made and hoping to either uh, fight somebody off for the scraps or to hopefully just be able to show up and grab what it can and get out of there. A Laphosaurus may have also adjusted by becoming uh, uh, more of a predator of very small animals, lizards and small mammals, things that some of the bigger African mammalian predators don't necessarily spend a lot of their time hunting. So maybe he would become a snake eater. Listen, that's, that's kind of an interesting concept. Those long legs of a Laphrosaurus would have been ideal for grabbing a snake with his foot or pinning it to the ground and keeping it from being able to strike. So maybe he would have adapted by sort of acting like a secretary bird. I don't know if you've ever seen a secretary bird, but they are notorious snake killers and they use their long dinosaurian-like legs to catch snakes. So that may have been what they did. All right, everybody. If you've got a question and you want to ask it, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page and fill out the form. Keep in mind, we get a thousand questions a week and it is impossible to answer them all. So keep trying, my friends. If you've written and I haven't been able to answer it, I'm so sorry, but keep trying. For you young people out there, always do your best to practice your reading because reading is very important and school has started for a lot of you. So I hope you do well when it comes to reading. And for everybody out there, I always appreciate the courtesy. You guys are so polite and so kind. And when I say guys, I'm not talking to the, just the men. I'm talking to everybody. I just say guys. So I get a lot of great questions from a lot of young ladies as well. Thank you guys very much. Take care and I will see you all soon.